Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits, uh, and even GD match results of a Narva culture hunter-gatherer from, uh, from Estonia. Uh, Narva culture, in case you don't know, is a hunter-gatherer culture of the Mesolithic period that lived in northeastern Europe. These people were, uh, in terms of ethnicity, a mixture of western hunter-gatherers from uh, the earlier period in Europe with the ancient North Eurasians from Siberia. So they are kind of like a mixture of Siberian hunter-gatherers and European hunter-gatherers. Uh, they are a little bit closer to the Western hunter-gatherers than the Eastern hunter-gatherers were, which are another group of European hunter-gatherers who lived more in the European region of Russia and uh, even in the Ural Mountains regions of, of uh, Eurasia. But these people, this Narva culture, they were definitely a lot more Western. They had a lot more affinities to Western hunter-gatherers than to Easter hunter-gatherers. However, still they had this a little bit of ancient North Eurasian admixture. So this is a female. Um, her mitochondrial lineage is U5. And um, her, her and she doesn't have a Y DNA because she's a female. But U5 is a lineage that is very common in European hunter-gatherers. In terms of the GD match results, I promised I'd show you and I will show you her results with Eurogenes K13. Uh, as you can see, she is scoring... Let me zoom in here. Yes, she's scoring 60.7% uh, Baltic, which is sort of this Northern European, Northeast European genetic drift, then 32.8% North Atlantic. Uh, but she's also scoring a little bit of Amerindian and Oceanian. And these are components that um, obviously are, are signatures. Uh, these components reveal that she has indeed a, a little bit of Eastern hunter gatherer or ancient North Eurasian admixture. Because Western hunter gatherers from the West of Europe would not score any Amerindian or Oceanian. These are components that Western hunter-gatherers don't score. Uh, she is still more, she is definitely more Western hunter-gatherer rather than Eastern. Let me show you a map, hold on, uh, just to explain what I'm talking about. Uh, Western versus Eastern. Come on. Come on. Whoa, come on. Eastern hunter-gatherer. Won't type, I don't know why. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is not a good map. Hold on, this is not the right period. Uh, so basically, she would be the Scandinavian hunter-gatherer. She's somewhere intermediate between the Western and the Eastern hunter-gatherers in terms of admixture. Or, for example, here, as you, as you can see, this map is a little bit misleading because if you look at this map, you get the impression that EHG is the dominant source of ancestry in the Baltic region where she is from. Uh, hold on, let me zoom in. So you get the wrong impression that she's mostly Eastern hunter-gatherer. That is not the case. She is a lot more Western hunter-gatherer. She has a lot more Western hunter-gatherer admixture than she does Eastern. Uh, but nonetheless, she's sort of a mixture of Western and Eastern hunter-gatherers. So let's move on to her phenotype, what kind of um, traits she has. We're going to start with Nashakot. So for the phenotype, the closest phenotype to her is this, followed by this, followed by this. She's definitely quite dark. Uh, European hunter-gatherers were quite dark people, darker than modern Europeans. For example, uh, among modern Estonians, you probably won't find many people who look like this or this or this. Um, and she's actually getting modeled uh, in the mixture. Hold on, let's look at the models. She's getting modeled as a mixture of Alpinid plus this corded wear phenotype with, dark, with darker eye color. Uh, this phenotype has brown eyes, as you can see, uh, or as a mixture of Alpinid plus this, or there's actually a version where she's scoring half Nordic, uh, half this plus half Nordic, which is quite interesting once again. All these mixtures are quite close to her in terms of the distances, so she probably did look something like this, a mixture of this and this. Uh, in terms of the eye color likelihood distribution, it looks like she most likely has brown eyes. Uh, hazel eyes are quite possible as well. Uh, darkest brown and the green and blue with amber center are also quite possible. She definitely does not have blue eyes, so her eye color is quite dark. Uh, her hair color is most likely dark brown, although light brown and black is also possible. So basically her hair, hair color is between light brown and black. Her skin color, it looks like, is white or olive. So uh, in terms of phenotype, I say she probably resembles French people. That's kind of how I imagine French people to look like. Uh, in terms of hair texture, it looks like she's got wavy or curly hair, although straight hair is also quite possible, and she does not have kinky hair. Uh, what is very interesting is she's heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 2, which is kind of surprising because from my experience with these um, Baltic hunter-gatherers, uh, 
it is kind of uncommon to see Baltic hunter gatherers hunter gatherers with dark color variants in BH2 and blue eye type 2. And she does not have any light color variants in BH3, which is also very surprising because once again, uh, these Baltic hunter gatherers are very, very known for having two light color variants in both BH2 and BH3. So I guess she is sort of an outlier. Um, I guess she's just kind of this Baltic hunter gatherer person who doesn't have the, the same typical genotypes as all the other Baltic hunter gatherers. She's more She's more of an outlier in this regard, uh, in terms of HERC2 genotype. Uh, in terms of phenotype oracle, let's see. Let's see what the phenotype oracle is showing. So 8.3% this, plus 8.3% this, plus 8.3% this, plus 16% this, plus 8.3% this, plus 33% this, plus 8% this, plus 8% this. All that together adds up to her phenotype. Uh, I think it would be pretty cool to morph all of this together. Um, but I don't really know how to do that. So if you can morph this together into into one picture, that would be really cool uh, to imagine what she might look like. But um, okay, um, what about the polygenic risk scores? Okay, so it looks like nothing relevant was found for atrial fibrillation or DVT. Very unfortunate. It's not a very high quality file. There is a lot of uh, a lot of relevant stuff is not found here. She has a below average score for bipolar type 1. She has a below average score for schizophrenia. She has a below average score for type 2 diabetes. She has a slightly above average score for Alzheimer's. She has a below average score for multiple sclerosis. One risk variant for breast cancer out of eight. Once again, if, uh, with a typical uh, typical file, like an ancestry file or my heritage file, you would see uh, for breast cancer out of 30 or out of 24, not out of eight. Uh, two risk variants for testicular cancer out of 14. Once again, Quite low coverage, but it's good. I mean, these are good results. It's very healthy. One risk variant for celiac disease out of eight, which is once again pretty good. Zero risk variants for GSS out of zero. Uh, literally nothing relevant was found here. For Crohn's disease, zero out of six. Once again, uh, not a lot of relevant stuff was found here. And zero for Reifenstein's out of zero. Nothing relevant for, for Reifenstein's was found. And zero risk variants for Parkinson's out of six. It looks like, once again, not much relevant stuff was found, but it's it's all good. I'm not seeing anything um, anything um alarming here what about the biomarkers panel let's look at that so it looks like based on her genotypes she has a predisposition to higher levels of vitamin d which is definitely really good she has a predisposition to higher levels of ldl cholesterol which is not that good and a predisposition to lower levels of hdl cholesterol which is also not really that good but it's all within the realm of averages so it's all with all within uh typical ranges she has a predisposition to slightly higher levels of glucose, which is once again not that good. Slightly higher levels of hemoglobin, which is once again not that good. And uh, pretty much average blood pressure, all right. And pretty much average levels of iron in the blood. So it looks like she has basically normal, typical human, gene um, human genetic predispositions for various biomarkers. And I'm going to be adding more biomarkers as time goes on. Uh, what else have I not talked about? Oh, yes. I haven't talked about the OCA2 and HERC2 eye color calculator results. So these are eye color calculators, calculator results based on only genotypes in the OCA2 and HERC2 region. So if you only take those into account, she's scoring hazel eyes or brown eyes, but hazel eyes come at first place here. Um, is it? It's it's definitely a lot worse of a calculator than Nashakot, but it is. Um, you know, it's, it's also something. It's uh, it may be a good way for me to detect. What it may be a good way for you to detect what caused your eye color prediction to be the way it is. Was it mo mostly influence of the HERC2 and OCA2 region, or was it mostly the, the influence of all the other gene genes and genetic uh, genetic um, variations? Well, that's pretty much all it is for this sample. You can download the sample from link which is in the description of the video. You can download it in 23andMe format. Uh, definitely leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching. Goodbye.